Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, I think it's uh, it's not a secret. I definitely struggled at the plate last year, so you know that's uh, that's been my main focus. That and trying to gain some weight. Um, you know, being around the guys last year in the clubhouse, you know, I saw kind of a difference. You know, you know, you got Goldie, 230 pounds, solid muscle, Nato. So you know, I felt felt like I needed to catch up a little bit. But yeah, for sure, been working on the uh, mechanics of hitting, trying to trying to get my swing right, trying to get better, um, trying to get stronger. You know, I want I want some power. Um, Memphis, you know, it, it worked out. Um, got some got some juice there, and then when I got called up, kind of just lacked it. You know, lacked contact, lacked the lacked the power. So those uh those are the big biggest things I'm working on. Jason, we talked to Mo yesterday, and he was pretty candid in saying that he quite a bit that he was every opportunity to be the opening day shortstop. For you this spring, what do you feel like you need to execute and be successful in to give yourself the best chance of that happening? Yeah, I mean, I just I'm just gonna go out there and compete. You know. Um, you know, I don't want to go into spring training. You know, I'm going to go into it with the same mindset as last year. Um, you know, I got some opportunities last year, and I made the most of them. So um, I'm going to go in there, you know, not thinking it's my spot. I'm going to go up there thinking, you know, I need to earn earn a spot. And, you know, that's my mindset the whole whole spring, whole year. You know, the whole year I want to work, and I want to work to be there and, and belong there. As you kind of go through the system and you hear guys talk about the jump from one level to the next and getting to the big leagues, What's the difference between hearing about it and preparing for it and then living it? And what do you learn about that experience of living that gap between AAA and the majors and adjusting to it? Yeah, I mean, so you always hear about it. You know, every level there's differences for sure. Um, you know, I thought the biggest jump was from high A to double A. Double uh, A to AAA was, wasn't too bad. But, you know, going from, going from trips to majors was a complete shift because you go from, you know, playing some younger guys in the lower levels with a few years of experience Triple A, you got you know guys with maybe a couple of years, and you go up there and you know I'm playing next to Goldie and Nato. Those guys both have 10 plus years, so it's like it completely changes the maturity of the game, um, the pace of play. But I mean the difference, I think um, everybody just told me that the game would speed up, and um, I think it did a little bit at first. But I mean with the with the preparation that our org has given me throughout the system, I think I uh, I think I handled it pretty well as far as the pressure and everything. You know, obviously didn't perform the way I wanted to, but no, I wasn't too bad, I didn't think. Do you learn things about yourself in that and how you react to it and how you respond to it? Like, what, what do you learn from yourself about this? Of course. I mean, you know, I'm a, I'm no stranger to struggle. I've struggled pretty much every level I've gone to whenever, you know, I first gotten up there, struggled for a little bit and then, you know, worked it out. So um, definitely learn, you know, I can, I can take a little bit of failure. You know, I, I definitely don't want to. I'd much rather, you know, hit 350 like everybody else, but... <laughs> Um, you know, it's a game of failure. So, you know, I'm starting to learn how to, you know, mentally accept that. You know, still, still a young kid, it feels like. But, you know, I'm trying to trying to mature myself a little bit quicker and to be around these guys. How valuable for your How valuable for your development was it to get the, get your feet wet a little bit at the end of the season? So that now you you come into spring and you you had that behind you already to, to be able to move forward with. Oh, it's amazing. I mean, the thought of me showing up this year and you know having to maybe go through that this first month and you know. It, uh, it's a shame that we had a kind of a bad season last year, but you know I'm glad I got my opportunity towards the end of it. You know, whenever you know wins didn't matter as much, but um, no, I'm, I'm super glad I got to go through that. You know, got to be around some of the guys I want to play with this year, so super excited. You know, I think it's going to really help me having that experience at the end of last year. Mason, you described the offensive struggles at the end of last season. Was it you getting away from the swing that works for you in the majors, or was it the approach of the major league pitchers that's going to force you to change? Your I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, I definitely got pitched a lot different than I was in Memphis. Um, you know, going back and looking at video or some film, I think I can I definitely see my swing changed a couple times, I think. Um, but I think that's just me, you know, being young and wanting to, you know, maybe going 0 for 10 or so and thinking that's the end of the world, trying to change something up right away. So I think the biggest thing for me was just trying to rush it, you know, trying to change too much too quick. Um, I think a big change was uh, was going to happen like like this off season. I think that's um, that's a good time for a change. Maybe little tweaks during the season, but I was trying to change too much. I think. Nice with the added strength. Are you seeing better bat speed? Are you seeing balls go further? Or are you doing the analytics and, and looking at your swing? What it looks like with more more strength? Uh, definitely, definitely, balls feels like it's it's coming off a little harder. Um, we def we don't have. Uh, you know the technology that we have here, so it's a little a little difficult to look at numbers. But um, you know, weight's gone up, swing's feeling nice, ball's coming off nice, so uh, just everything feels good. Bat, bat's feeling a little bit lighter, so yeah. Is there a certain element of your game when you're 
think about what you did in the offseason that you're excited to show off in spring and that you feel like you've made strides in? Um, I mean, really just hitting. I mean, I think defensively I performed pretty well up until, you know, I had a, one pretty bad game last year. But um, I think defensively I'm just going to try to, you know, obviously trying to get better every day. But um, my main focus has been really just hitting. I want to I wanna show up and, and show the guys I can compete. Major what change did you make? To the like, what are some of the specific things that you went to work on? Yeah, I mean, really just hip hinge and stuff. I mean, last year I was I was jumping out of my jumping out of my legs real quick, jumping out the ball. Um, Really, just trying to take the same swing path every every single time. I feel like last year, you know, I might not have set my plant foot in the same spot every time, or might have been leaning over my front hip. So, really, just trying to be consistent with the swing every single swing. Um, you see guys like Goldie and, and their intent to their work in the cages, and whether it be T work, front toss, whatever it may be, they do the same thing every single time, set up the exact same way. So, for me, it's been that just trying to be consistent. Um, like I said, the hip hinge stuff for me, trying to get into my legs more, I feel like that you know might cause a little bit more power. Um, I had a pretty big scissor kick last year. I have the past couple of years, um, and that's really unintentional. Uh, but I've been trying to cut back on that. I feel like that might get me out of position sometimes. And I think it helps me sometimes, but I think for the most part, you know, just having a more standard swing would be would be better. You remember last year sitting here not kind of knowing what, what happened during the season. How are you different today than you were a year ago? Um, shoot, man. I mean, last year was great for me being around being around the AAA guys for you know three, four months, five months, and then getting called up with the older guys. I think just the maturity level is a lot different. I think um, you know only being a AA last year, being around those guys, we got great guys at every level, but just the, like I said, the maturity level at each level gets bigger and better. Um, you know, I had a great talks last year, great great conversations with a lot of people. Um, you know, in fact, Goldie, we sat down for about two hours in Milwaukee, had brunch, and just talked. Um, so that was good. But yeah, I'm just ready. Mason, do you feel like those last couple of um, weeks in majors did that really direct the changes that you're trying to make this off season? I mean, because you had good numbers, but at least you know, it seemed like you performed well in AAA. Did the time in the majors really sort of set the path for what you're doing this off season? A hundred percent. I mean, you know, I showed up, did not hit very well. Um, but I think the last two, three weeks or so, I mean, worked with Turner Ward and, and Brandon Allen, and we just got to work on what I wanted to work on this off season. You know, got some, got some advice from them as far as you know what I, what tweaks I needed to make and what what changes they think needed to be made. Um, we started working on that at the end of the year, and then you know I just took it into my off season trying to trying to get to where I'm at right now. You said last year that over the course of the long season you lose weight. You, you wanted to start at a better weight. What, how much weight have you put on? How much? Have you eaten the 4,000 calories a day or anything like that? Nah, definitely, definitely no diet plan for me. I'm just, I'm just trying to eat as much as I can. I, uh, I think I got down a, it, in the 160s last year, so um, I want to, I want to. If I drop this year, I want to drop to 180. You know, I usually drop 10 to 15 pounds. I don't really know what what that may be. I usually don't lose muscle. It's usually a lot of fat, but um, I think. Uh, me showing up this year, I'm, I want to be around 195 if I can. You know, I need to put on a few more pounds, but I think that would be really good for me. If you know, if I lose weight and I drop to 180, 185, I'll still have that strength, and I think I'll, it'll help me carry through a 162 game season. Yeah, the footwork and load stuff you were talking about. Can you do that dry or like in a mirror? Do you have to feel that through the ball? Like, are you a guy who needs to get all the way through your swing? to feel that kind of um, launching the way you wanted to? Or can you like just repeat it and over and over and then kind of train that once you get the more live swing stuff? I mean, obviously I'd much rather have, you know, live action and, and be swinging, you know, bats a ball. But I mean, I can look in a mirror and, and tell myself whether or not, you know, whether I might be leaning forward, leaning back, you know, on my tippy toes. So not for sure. I can just look at a mirror and, and pretty much get it. Is that a thing where like on video you can watch your, like, can you watch yourself load on video and know this was a good swing versus a bad swing before you kind of see yourself go through? I don't know. Like, where do you, where I guess, where in your swing path do you see it not be where you want to be? Pretty much immediately. Last year, whenever I would lift my my left leg, you know, from my leg kick, I would really just jump out. So immediately, you can kind of see a shift going this way, sure. rather than a hinge going twisting this way while this leg's moving forward. So um, I think if you have a the best angle would be a front camera, seeing me from, you know, this way. Um, but yeah, I think pretty much immediately I can tell if it's going to be a good or bad swing. How much of that was just trying to maybe force the production, or, or thinking they had to be that far ahead, or you know, jumping out is sometimes 
I, anxious moment? I think it was a, a fear of striking out. Um, you know, me not being the biggest guy in the world, you know, I want to get on base, you know, as much as Tommy Edmond or a Lars Newbar, but Newbar might. So for me, I think it was just, um, you know, I don't want to strike out. I want to show these guys I can compete. And I think that was causing me to swing at some, some pitches I shouldn't have been swinging at, trying to battle early, you know, not to strike count, swinging at, swinging at pitches I didn't need to swing at. So much did you and Jordan kind of reflect on? You kind of both kind of went through this experience together, and how much have you tried to motivate each other this off season? I know the way you guys text each other and trash talk to each other. How much have you tried to drive each other? Oh, every day. I mean, we go back and forth. Whether you know it might be video games or you know weight gain. You know, he told me he gained a whole bunch of weight, so that, that pushed me. To, you know, to gain even more. So. You know, I was excited about myself, and then he let me down a little bit. You know, I gained. I'm 260 now. Like, come on, bro. <laughs> but, no, nah, I mean, we uh, we talk a lot. I mean, that's my guy. You know, obviously, um, he had a great year last year, especially rookie season. Um, but, I mean, yeah, he's working every day. You know, he's working defensively. Obviously, I said he, he's gained some weight, so I'm sure he'll come back hitting bombs. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we're just we're super excited. Definitely talking about last year. I mean, he obviously knows how bad I struggled, and, you know what we went through, but it's. Uh, I think it'll be a lot of fun this year. Where have you been working out? Are you in Texas? Or are you down in Florida? Where have you been spending your off season? Uh, I'm down where it's warm. I'm in Houston for sure. <laughs> Go Texans, by the way. Mason, how much do you see that your your stolen base ability being a, a vital part of your game at the big league level? Obviously, at the minors, you've done that. But how much do you believe that that can still um, be a, a factor for you in the bigs? Oh, for sure. I mean, I didn't run too much last year. I didn't, you know, I didn't get on base a lot, so I didn't get too many opportunities. But um, no, I mean, you see guys like Tommy taking, you know, a bag, and then Goldie hits a broken bat single, and he ends up scoring on. It. I mean, that's that's a big deal. You know, each run counts. So, no, I think it'll be huge for me. I mean, being a speed guy, I need to I need to get you know at least twenty, thirty bags a year. So, um, I think for me that'll be just an every year thing. I mean, not not too worried about it. Speed for me is. The least of my concerns, I think. Um, so yeah, I mean that's, that'll just come. Does that mindset kind of coincide with you saying I want to be a guy that gets on base and you know you get to second base with the stolen base? That that's another way to kind of produce power in a way or, or get yourself into scoring position. A hundred percent. I mean, it also helps the guys around me, helps the team. You know, it's it's exciting. You know, I feel like when Ricky Henderson was running around everywhere, everybody was having a good time watching him run, and you know whether he was out or safe, he was putting his team, you know, for the most part, in a in a, in a great spot. So. Um, for me, you know, whether it be, you know, eight spot, nine spot, if I get on base and get to second with Tommy Edmond or Lars Newbar coming up, you know, I like our chances. So um, I think it does help the team a lot. Um, you know, turning a single into a double is, is a big deal. You know, if uh, if Jordan hits a single, he might not get the, you know, he might not get that steal. But for me, it's it's a little different. So. Um, I think just the consistency. I mean, every year I've gotten a little bit more consistent. Um, you know, working with Cheo at the beginning of the year, every year has always gotten me right. Um, I think throughout the years it's just gotten better. Um, then when I got up, Stubby Clap, I worked with him, and he's a lefty. And I don't know if y'all have ever taken Fungo, but taking Fungo from Stubby, hitting lefty backspin, hitting sliders at you, I mean, taking grounders from him really prepares you for the game. Um, it feels, I mean, it's probably harder than the game actually is. So I think just working with, with those two guys has, has got me ready. I mean, every year I've, I've, I feel like I've gotten better, and, you know, I want to get better every year. What do you expect to see from Jordan? I, I mean, shoot, I, I expect to see Jordan Walker things. I mean, I've, I've seen him play for three, four years now. I mean, he's only gotten only gotten bigger and better every year. You know, obviously went out last year. 20, 21 years old and competed almost the full year. You know, got called down a little bit, which is very difficult. I feel like on a on a 20 year old, then gets called back up and then just competes the rest of the year. So, I think he's going to show up this year. You know, handle business. Um, he doesn't hear a lot of outside noise, so you know the media doesn't really affect him, or you know comments don't really affect him. He's really just going to go out there. You know, play for his family, play for his brothers, and um, yeah, I think he'll have a great year again. If his confidence kind of rubs off. Oh, I mean, if he's going, I feel like I'm going a little bit. You know, whenever he hits a double, I feel like part of me hit a double. So, and I know he feels the same way. So, yeah, I mean, when we're when we're rolling together, it's it's a lot of fun. Mason, speaking of your confidence, this is a critical start of the year, 2024, coming off of a 
disappointing 2023 season, the team is going to rely on you as the starting shortstop. How much confidence does that instill in you, knowing that the team, under all this pressure, has this confidence in you? Yeah, I mean, you know, throughout the whole minor league system, they've always, you know, always trusted in me, always believed in me, you know, gave me the most support I could ever imagine. Um, but yeah, I mean, it feels great. I mean, last year, getting that, getting the call up, and then obviously struggling, and then them still putting me in every day, and, and getting that work, and getting that experience, it feels great. You know, I mean, I, it makes me really want to be here for a long time. You know, win a, win championships here for a long time. Mason, obviously, you respect a lot of your teammates from growing up in the, in the system. But uh, is there a certain player you're looking forward to seeing make that jump this year, whether it's Triple A in the Bigs or Single A in Triple A, whatever it is. Um, I got two guys, I'll say. One of ours just got added to the 40, man, Pedro Paez. He's a catcher. Um, I don't know how he gets up this year, um, but, I mean, he's just a great guy to be around. Everybody that I've ever met loves him. Um, but, yeah, just a great person. And then Tink Hens, he's one of my – him and Jordan, probably my best friends in the world. Um, Tink called me last night talking about how, how much fun he's having. You can't wait for the season, so – for me, it'd probably be Tank. I mean, I know how unbelievably he is, and I, I can't wait for a lot of a lot of other people to see that in person, and you know, get to see that at Bush. With, with uh, Tank, I mean, how much have you been able to just keep up with what his stuff looks like and how he develop, how he's developed as he's gotten more innings? I'm after being pretty limited for a couple of years. Yeah, I mean, so last year when he started in High A, that was uh, obviously we had been together all spring training, and you know, he started there. We were both pretty disappointed in it. We thought I. Personally, I thought he was going to start a little bit higher, but um, no. I mean, seeing checking in with him every every week, you know, seeing how his starts going, seeing how he's throwing, how he's feeling. Um, he had a little bit of a, an injury last year with like a, I think a chest injury, but you know, came back doing his thing. And I think um, the biggest thing for him is just staying healthy. I mean, he's everybody knows how good he is, so I think for him it's just being consistent, staying healthy. You see guys like Garrett Cole throwing 250 innings, so it's you know if Tink can do that, you know, and, and really. That'd be that'd be really big for us. Vic, how well, how well do you know Victor Scott? He's talked about he wants to model himself after what you and Jordan did. You know, he, he's watched you guys and, and looked up to you kind of. Have you been able to talk to him, or do you know him well at all? Yeah, for sure. Last year we got we got pretty close in spring training. You know, he um out there in the outfield, so I didn't get to see him too much. But you know, talking to him during BP or whatnot, um, he's a very interesting cat. I mean, he's uh -huh. he's. He's different for sure, but super exciting. I mean, watching that dude run, watching that dude make plays. I mean, it's for me watching the highlights is one of the best parts. You know, it's uh, seeing him rob a rob a home run jumping 13 feet in the air. It's like it's different. So seeing, I'd like to see that for sure in person. I haven't got to see it too much, but yeah, I, I can't wait to play with that guy. Okay, so when you say a different cat, is there something particular that comes to mind when you think about just him, you know, what you the interaction you've had with him that looks a little different or seems a little different? I would say I would say pretty much. All baseball players are different cats, but I mean, you know, you got guys like Nato, man. Nato's different. Nato's gonna, he's an animal. He's gonna go out there and he's gonna compete. He's gonna, not gonna smile. He's gonna go out there and, and he's a killer. And I think, I think Vic Scott's probably the same way. You know, the, the few conversations I've had with him, he, uh, and what I've heard about him, he seems just like a dog to me. He seems like he wants to go out there and, you know, he wants to beat everybody. Mason, there was a lot of talk last year, or maybe before, about uh, your arm speed and being able to throw really quickly over first base. Uh, how much of that is still within uh, the work that you're doing this offseason or preparing for first base with that? Um, I mean, the arm, to be honest, that's that might be the one thing I don't I don't worry about. Um, for me, I used to try to throw as hard as I could every single time. Um, now I'm just trying to hit Goldie in the chest. So um, I think it's it's a big part of my game for sure. One of the biggest, if if not the biggest. But I think um, I think that's just you know it's something that's always in the back pocket rather than you know what's what's on the what's on the surface. Jason, did they did they express to you their wishes to have you be the starting shortstop, or was it the actions that they had keeping you in the lineup that kind of told you that? Um, well, I mean, to be quite frank, I have no idea what what's going to happen going into the season. But um, the confidence level I have, I know I know they they believed in me last year. I know. You know, they still believe in me every day. So um, for me, I just want to go out there and compete, compete for a spot. You know, I, I've never been the type to be, you know, I've, I've never felt entitled for anything. So, you know, I don't I don't want to be given a spot. I want to I want to go out there and earn it. Thoughts on, thoughts on CJ Stroud? Hey, that's the guy, man. That's a huge day, <laughs> man. Hey, saving the Texans organization right there. Have you ever gotten to meet him? 
No, I have not. I wish. He was. Uh, I know he went to Ohio State, so I, you know I, I'm not. It's, that's that's North, brother. That's cold up there. <laughs> um, nah, I mean he's, he's been a lot of fun. Great for the city. I mean, obviously very hum, humble kid. I mean, young guy. So yeah, future's looking bright yeah. for sure. Do you have a favorite memory from your time up? Major League Club that drives you, something that you think back to that, that makes you want to push even harder in the offseason? I mean, Buenos 200 was was by far my favorite game of the year. I mean, I'm, I'm putting that over my debut, I would say. Um, just the atmosphere. I mean, every pitch, the fans were going crazy. It, it felt like a playoff atmosphere. And, you know, obviously I've never been to the playoffs, so getting to feel that was was pretty special to me and it's it makes me want to you know it makes me want to get there and, and compete for a World Series to see how this how the stadium would get what you do with the ball that ended up in the crowd your first hit <laughs> what did you do end up doing with it uh, put it in the case and then gave it to mama for sure I got the homer she got the first hit though <laughs> hey Mason when you saw the Otani contracts did you did, was there a flicker in your mind of a man maybe a <laughs> Man, that was, it's funny. That was that was kind of what what was the talk out of the draft was just kind of watching Shohei and you know maybe comparing myself to him. Comparing yourself to Shohei Otani is not very smart. I mean that dude, <laughs> one of the best pitchers and one of the best hitters in the league. That's. Is one of one, man. That's yeah. That contract was was insane for sure. Do you think it's going to lead to more guys trying to do both? I mean, you can speak to how hard it is to try to do both. Yeah, I, was, I think guys both. are going to try. I don't. I don't know if guys are going to be able to. I mean, you'd have to. You look at his build. He's you know six five. He's a big dude hitting bombs at the DH spot. Um, you know, for a guy like me, I think one of my biggest assets is defense. So you know, I can't. I'm not about to be a DH. I could go to the outfield, but probably a little tough on the arm, not a first baseman. So, you know, it would have to be a special mix. I think it'd have to be another just big donkey, maybe a Luke and Baker type guy. You can play first and, and throw 97. So. Are you leaning on Ollie to be the guy who gets to come in and pitch if they have to go position player and round in a game? Me? Yeah. No, nah, I'll never pitch. They'll never let me. Pitch. <laughs> they, yeah, no, nah, I've had that conversation multiple times, minor leagues, majors, but it would have to be. It would have to be something crazy. And I would have to probably throw with my left hand. <laughs> <laughs>